Gracious Lord, as we come before you, we ask that you would once again enlighten our hearts and minds with the blessing of your spirit, that you would grant to us that security that comes from you alone, and that you would help us to grasp the wonder of all that you have done for us and what you will continue to do on our behalf. So I place this time into your hands and ask that your true goodness would be upon us all as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thunder of the great 
waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord of God is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firmly. All of you should your house for endless days, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lord in His Word, in His Book of Revelation, tells us who He is as our Lord and God. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus is making it very clear he is the Almighty God, He is eternal, and all the all and that all things in heaven and earth are his He alone is the Savior and Lord, He alone is the King of Kings, and He alone is the salvation to His kingdom. He also explains to us the position we have before we in heaven. The revelation explains these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those who strengthen you and whose heart are the highways to God. We are his blessed children covered in his righteousness and given the blessing of being the one body of Christ before his throne forever. End of the world for believers is a time when we are be beginning joined with all fellow believers before the Lord. We together will celebrate the grace he has given to all whose sins have been removed by his blood. We will stand as the one true ch church before the throne of the everlasting Lord and join in the heavenly praise of our God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may persevere in both faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
place in the lives of those who are the Lord's. Evil will be bound by the power of the cross, and those who have aligned themselves with Satan will take their place in hell, where there is no hope, forgiveness, or mercy of any kind. God's children will be completely separated from evil, and they will never have the opportunity to bring the burden into their lives ever again. And in the world is the end of God's creation. He provides a new heaven and new earth. He brings perfection in all ways for his people. He binds us to one another through his, the blessing of his spirit. God provides his people the, the creation he intended for them all to have. He, he grants them eternity of being tabernacled under his loving grace and faith. <coughs> The readings for today all center on a principle. This is the last Sunday of the church year, which where we um, are given by God an understanding of the place that he holds and the place that we hold. They are vastly different, and he does this so that we have a complete sense of security and a remarkable gift given to us by him of knowing that as our Father, He accomplishes His purpose very well. As normally I introduce each of the lessons, uh, because of my voice, that is my introduction for all of them this morning, so we will continue with the Old Testament lesson. We, found a, we find it in Isaiah 51, verses 4 through 6. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the people. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the people. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. The epistle is found in Jude, verses 20 through 25. But you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith, pray, in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. Lisa. Amen. Into the world is when Christ returns to take those who have been redeemed in his blood to the eternal gift he prepared for them. It is the time when we will see Christ in all his glory and we will be fully immersed in the joy of faith. It is our time of celebration and wonder, our time of being joined with all those of faith who will stand as one forever. End of all time when our Lord returns, there will be no fear, no tears, no pain, no hardship, and no evil for those who are his own. We will rejoice and sing praise for our victorious Lord and to the Father and Holy Spirit. We will know the perfect holiness of God and the blessings of being restored and the perfection he alone could provide. Forever we will be in the presence of our God, praising his name, experiencing his grace, and living in the comfort of his gift of salvation. He will make us all new and we will remain in his perfection forever.
Would you please rise? The Holy Gospel for this morning is found in the 13th chapter of Mark. It begins with verse 24. Jesus said, In those days, after that great tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts the servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the cock crows or in the morning lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Here ends the Holy Gospel. Would you please join me in confessing our faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed at the back of the hymn. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord presents us with many important truths that He wants us to understand. And also give to us an insight that will make it so life is much more simple. In what we have before us, I was taught by my father. When I was a kid, when I was 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, there was never one time when my father asked me when we walked to the car to get in it, to go someplace, to drive. He never once said, Kirk, take over and drive. I was not of age, it was not my position. That was an adult position. We had a 66 Chevy Impala. Nice big back seat. Mom and Dad sat in the front seat. We five boys were in the back. If we didn't like it, my father had a very quick hand, and we began liking it a lot more. <laughs> it taught us a position. They were the parents. We were the kids. One time I was with my dad. It was after a, a football game. And we walked out into the middle of Fort Wayne, and we were walking down a street. And as the age of seven, I looked at, I could see bricks and stones being thrown back over the, the street. They were picking them up and throwing them through people's windows. It was during the black, white hate days in Fort Wayne. My dad said to me, Kirk, stay on my head. I stayed right on his head. My dad walked into the middle of all these kids who were in anger and throwing things, and my dad said, I told you to go home. And then they did. The adult position was my father taking charge of all those kids. My kid position was to stay on his hip. And I did. There was a clear distinction that was made. My father's issues, my issues. I was taught this my whole life. My father always taught us as kids, if you reach 18 and think you know something, you don't. Your minds are still full of mush. Then Doc Mary helped explain to me that our frontal lobes don't fully develop. All the dendrites aren't doing what they're supposed to until we reach 25. My father was never wrong. He taught me there are adult positions. And then there are kid positions. Jesus explains to us this very issue on a spiritual level. The Father in heaven has father issues. Creation, salvation, heaven, and our eternal home. His department, his understanding. Angels don't know. The Son himself doesn't know, and we have no clue. He assures us, as the Father is, that he has everything under his charge. We have nothing to worry about. In fact, we should never concern ourselves with Father issues. We cannot handle them. As a child, my security came because I believed my dad could handle anything. 
And he made it very clear to us that when he spoke, it was the right thing. The Father in heaven assures us what is the right thing. Trusting that he understands how to be the Father. And we have been given instructions about how to be the children. This is what he says. We forgive, we pray, we study the word, and we share the gospel. This is our gift. How the world ends should make no difference to us. That's a father issue. When it's going to happen should not concern us at all. It's a father issue. What should concern us is how we live each day of our life. Because he has taken care of eternity. He has paid the price for our sins and we have salvation. He has made it so that we have sense of security that we all know that if we die today, we are in heaven. Not because of goodness we have, but because we are covered by the remarkable grace of our God, the blood of his Son. The Lord looks down upon me. And says, this is a sinner who needs saved. And then he saved me. I cannot look to God and say, God, I am so wise. I know that you deserve me. Because I don't. God's position, our position. The one thing that really bothers me so much about today's world is that's not even taught about in many places anymore. Adults and kids. We cheat them. We cheat them. It always filters over into the church as well. There are God issues called His Word, His place, His position, His salvation, His grace, His mercy. And then there's our position. We receive them. We don't earn them. We don't deserve them. We have never come to a place where we can have any merit to claim. We are sinners. We are children who need to be saved by our Father. And our Father in Heaven has done this. Understanding that means then following what he asks is natural. So we forgive and we pray and we share kindness and we share the gospel. We act as what we are, the children. On the fourth day of creation, our Lord said, let there be light. I want lights in the sky, one for the day, one for the night. The universe was created. When Jesus returns, he is going to take that massive universe, which, by the way, is simply a created thing, which is exactly how the Father sees it. It's just a created thing. When Jesus returns, it's going to be rent. Everything is going to fall apart. The sun is going to stop shining. The moon will not have any light on it because the sun is gone. And then there will be the presence of the Lord. He is the Almighty God. So we have nothing to worry about. If He can take the universe and bring it into existence with a word, if he can come back and remove it simply because of his presence, there is nothing that we will ever have to deal with that he can't handle easily. Because those are father issues. When I go before
before my God and say, forgive me. That's a father thing. He has made me his child. He's given me the right and privilege to ask for forgiveness. But my forgiveness isn't given because I ask. It was forgiven because he shed his son's blood on the cross. God did what was necessary so that I would be forgiven. Because he really knows how to do the father issues. So I know what peace of heart means. If I die, I live. If I stand before God, I have nothing to fear. If I had to give an account of myself, I would be shaking in my boots. I get to look to the Lord and He gives an account for me. My son has declared that you are worthy. An amazing gift. That's why we as Christians stand there in such a unique position before this world. We have a hope that is truly eternal. We have a security that they cannot even grasp. I love what God has done. I love that he explains to us throughout the scriptures that he is our father and he knows how to do it. And then he has equipped us to be his children so that we know how to do that. I don't care when the world ends. I don't. Today would be okay. Because when it happens, every one of us are going to be gathered by the angels. How cool is that? No matter where we are in the world, or if we're in heaven, or we're still on earth, he's going to gather us all together. We're going to be one huge group of people celebrating on levels we can't even imagine. This is going to be awesome. That's what God explains. Why should you worry about it? Why should you try to waste all your time figuring out when it's going to happen? Share what's going to happen. Share what I have done. This is what he says our role is, our purpose is. God is so gracious in what he has proclaimed. It's remarkable what he has given us. May God in his mercy truly lead us each day to a sense of peace and the wondrous blessing of his coming.
gracious Father, to give us a privilege to bring for you our fellow members. This morning we bring for you, first of all, Lamar, Scott, Jerry Lee, and Elliot. For Scott and Jerry Lee, we thank you, Lord, for the life that you have given them together, for the goodness that you have enabled them to share, for the many ways that you have truly granted your blessings upon them. May you continue to unite their hearts and minds, guide them with your spirit, and truly provide them that unity which comes through you alone. For Jerry Lee, we ask your special care as she finishes her five months teaching over in England. May you keep her under your care and truly guide her back home safely. For Elliot, continue to guide and bless him, dear Lord. Lift him up each day, keep him ever close to you, and provide your blessings upon him. For the ladies, for Jerry and Suzanne, for Matt and Clay. For Jerry and Suzanne, we thank you, Lord, for the life that you have given them for the strength that you have pla placed between them, and for the goodness that you have enabled them to experience and to share together. May you continue, dear Lord, to walk with them each day, unite their hearts and minds ever closer to each other, and to you, and truly provide them with goodness. For Matt and Clay, keep them under your care, guide them each day, open up their minds and hearts to all that you desire for them to learn, and truly provide your blessing upon them. For the Lettermans, for Bob and Kim, Riley and Max. For Bob and Kim, we thank you, Lord, for the goodness that you have given to them, for the many ways that you have showered your blessings upon them in their life, for the many ways that you have enabled them to touch the lives of others, and for the strength that you have placed between them. May you continue to walk near them each day, dear Lord, and keep them ever close to you. For Riley and Max, continue to open up their minds and hearts, provide your guidance upon them, and keep them very close to you. For Audra, we thank you for this wondrous birth of Dane, and ask that you would now continue to provide them all, your presence, your health, and your goodness. For Bob, we thank you for the success of his surgery, and we ask now your healing power upon him, that you would ease him his pain and carry him forward. For Leslie's family, especially for her children, we ask your hand of blessing and comfort be upon him. You alone understand all that they are feeling, and so we place them into your hands, trusting in what you will do. For all those who loved her, may you truly touch them with the hope of the resurrection and provide them a strength beyond their own to help serve and support and lift up Leslie's children. For Rhonda, we ask that you would continue to be with her, dear Lord, and provide her your strength and special presence. For Betty, that you would continue to move her forward and grant your goodness upon her. For Sherry, that you would continue to provide healing, ease of pain, and a clarity of sight. And for Curtis, that you would lift him up each day, as only you can. And for our fellow believers in this world, dear Lord, who continue to endure such persecution because of their faith, touch them with your spirit, dear Lord. Grant to them a strength beyond their own, and enable them to witness well of the hope they have inside. So we are privileged to place them into your hands, dear Lord, and trust in all that you will provide. And as always, dear Lord, we bring before you our military men and women, asking that you would be with them and guide and direct them, enabling them to carry out their mission in a manner that is pleasing to you and a true blessing to your kingdom. And as your people, we are privileged to look to you this day once again, dear Lord, in the prayer that your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
give ear to my cry. Hold on to your peace, everyone's ears. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech you, Almighty God, and to your church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which comes from above, that your word, as becomes it, may not be bound, but have free course, and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ, holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end, Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his eternal peace. Amen. Two things I need to say. I'd like to cut them short so I didn't, but um, please stay and eat uh, the Thanksgiving meal that has been prepared. Spend some time talking about a lot of good things of life. Second thing, May, are you still back there? Um, for the youth group to raise money to go to uh, Dolan's. The uh, youth are selling ornaments for our Christmas. So as you go by, have May explain what they are, what they cost, and the joy of it, and then I will. Thank you. <laughs>